This is the Carolina Real Estate Podcast. Today, a special episode of the Carolina Real Estate Podcast, Coastal Home Tour. Coastal Home Tour takes you on a tour of coastal neighborhoods. Your tour guides are knowledgeable and experienced Coastal Carolina realtors who know this neighborhood. Listen as they talk about properties, lifestyle, and amenities in this neighborhood. Hello, this is Bill Maccio. Welcome to the Carolina Real Estate Podcast, previously known as Voice for Real Estate. Today is our Coastal Home Tour edition. I'd like to welcome our guest, Christy Whitlock with the Litchfield Company. Christy, thanks for joining us. This is exciting. I'm, I'm happy you're here. You doing all right today? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be here, especially so, with my view out here. Of yeah. The so what are you looking at right now? Tell us what you're looking at. I know you're in Pauly's Island. We're going to talk about Pauly's Island, but what are you looking at right now? So I'm sitting on the back deck of this beautiful home that I have listed, 107 Atlantic Avenue, and I'm watching these two guys catch some flounder out on the dock, and I'm watching an egret catch a fish out here in the creek. I'm looking at the mainland, so I'm sitting on the ocean side looking at the mainland, but the creek is in between. Very skinny little creek here that we have on the ocean. On the you know, when I was looking at the photos, Christy, there's, uh, and I can hardly wait to take people on a tour of it. That's why we're here to tour this house, but Man, it's a beautiful house. The views are awesome. You know? These so, are awesome. And, and temperature today is just like perfect. There's no humidity. It's cool enough to wear a jacket. And there's just birds everywhere. I took a three-mile run on the island this morning. So I've been out in nature all day, and it's been a, a joy all day. So happy so, to be here. So, Christy, to, you know, a lot of people think of Pauly's Island as a uh, – uh, an island resort or a uh, second home environment. You, but you've raised your family there. Can you tell us about your life there, uh, raising your family, a little bit about the island? I've been coming here uh, since a child. My grandparents had a house just down from where I I'm actually on the very northern tip of the island so I can see Litchfield, the next beach over. And my grandparents had a little A-frame on the creek, and we used to come here and just have the best time as kids. And um, I went to pharmacy school at Medical University in Charleston, graduated there in 1990 and packed my bags and came straight back here and um, built a little house here in Pauly's and raised all three of my kids here. So, yeah, to your point, um, asking about is it more second home? I think it it was then. And there weren't that many people my age here at the time. That has changed dramatically. And um, we have a strong school system here. The Waccamaw High School is doing great, um, great education, and, and lots more young people moving to the area, especially from Mount Pleasant, actually. You know, um, yeah, I want to touch on that because you and I have had conversations about this over the years. There's a tremendous amount of synergy between South Strand and Mount Pleasant, not Myrtle Beach and Mount Pleasant, but South Strand and Mount Pleasant. And why do you think that is? Well, I think people are looking for like that laid back lifestyle and beach lifestyle. And, you know, if I if I think about the areas, we always kind of gets lumped in with like Myrtle Beach. And honestly, I, I would say from Myrtle's Inlet up north, it, things just change a little bit. So the South Strand, meaning from Georgetown to um, to Litchfield, Myrtle's Inlet area, very different. It's a very different lifestyle. Yeah, very, very different from Myrtle Beach, correct? Very different from Myrtle Beach, and it's it's similar to the Mount Pleasant area, but the the I think proximity. You know, we have a very small strip of land. So where I live over in the in Waverly, which is a creek that comes off the ICW Waccamaw River, it take I'm um, I'm literally one red light and one stop sign away from the beach, and so I come right. watch the sunrise every morning with my three dogs. I have three golden doodles. Put them in the back of the Mini Cooper. We head over here to watch the sunrise, and it, it's so convenient to get access to restaurants and beaches and, and that lifestyle, and we're gaining so much more um, things to do here. That, um, But it's pretty laid back. Christy, what is the population of Paul's Island? I think um, the county itself, Georgetown County, has 60,000 people. Um, here's an interesting little tidbit. Only 16,000 people are in the working age to pull from. So affordable housing, um, attainable housing, workforce housing is a side project that I'm working on with some 
key players yeah, yeah. here in the community and trying to get some, you know, play. You, people want to live and work here. Um, and I would say on the, I don't really know, Bill, that's a good question. How many people actually live in Pauly's? Um, I think it's around 15,000. Um, I could be wrong. There's a good number of people that have businesses in Mount Pleasant that live in Pauly's Island. I'm really excited about this house. This house you have listed, when I looked at these photos and stuff, that kitchen is the kill for. I mean, yeah. I, it's not like I a big cook or not. I'm not. But it seems really spacious. Tell me about it. So the kitchen, um, all granite countertops. What I love about it the most is it's very convenient. Like when you have people here, this is a this is a rental. You know, this this house it it, it stays booked year round. Um, but the the cool thing is you can have a lot of people in the kitchen at the same time in the dining area, and it's not too crowded. But Bill, the windows on the front side. Yeah, the way I noticed that. Is, situated yeah. so you're this house is on the very northern tip of the island the island being only three miles long roughly about three miles long this is the only gated community on the island there's only about 12 houses down here on the north end and it opens up to the inlet are you saying this house is one of 12 on this end of the island you're we're on right now yeah, the wow. gated, the little gated community. Um, this property was owned by Dr. Assey in Georgetown for many years. Dr. Assey, he was, he worked on the, um, I think he was on the Medicaid board and just a fantastic family. They bought all this property and then they, over time, broke these into individual lots. So it's, there's only one lot left in here um, and it's on Oceanside. So this, this is situated on the creek with its own shared dock with the next door neighbor and they have two floating docks, but then um, the kitchen it overlooks the um, the inlet between Litchfield and Pauly's. And it also has like uh, its own private walkway over to the beach. The docks would be the, the creek is, yeah, you could probably put about a, a 20 foot, 20 to 20, 20 to 30 foot boat out there because you're so close to the ocean. I mean, you're just like right here. You would just pop around, go through the inlet and you're out in the ocean. <clears throat> for deep water fishing. Be part of the conversation surrounding Mount Pleasant. Sponsor the Mount Pleasant Podcast. Podcast marketing is the new powerful way to brand your business and reach your customers. For more information, visit carolinapodcasts.com or call 843-345-7012. You're watching the Carolina Real Estate Podcast, Coastal Home Tour Edition. What do you think of the master bedroom? You know, this house, it's um, the master bedrooms on the, the second floor. This house was built by this lovely family over in Georgetown. Um, they owned independent seafood for 80 years. And they are Georgetonians through and through. And they bought this house, built this house for the two of them. And since have moved to Bishop Gadsden down in Charleston. And there were some special yeah, needs. There's a synergy here. again. I know. I mean, it's crazy. Well, you know, um, building the George Hotel with my two partners, we just named our restaurant the Independent um, after this family who ran and operated that independent seafood downtown Georgetown for 80 years. And so just paying homage to that family and what, what they gave to our community. Good for you, cool. Christy. You're, that just shows your roots in the community you serve. And actually it shows your roots of not roots of not only uh, Pauly's Island, but all the Carolina coast, really. Oh, yeah. I love it here. I mean, always have. You know, Bill, let me tell you a little bit about, so the house, the, the all the bedrooms are upstairs except for one. I think there's one downstairs. Um, and this house is um is it's all about the where it's located and the the owner the current owner has decided in mid-november he is going to take the deck that i'm sitting on that i'm um, overlooking the creek he's going to take this deck expand it and then do a, a swimming pool right off of this deck so built up off the ground so it's level with the main floor i can't wait to share the renderings that i'm i'm receiving some color renderings this week and it has a spiral staircase that goes upstairs. He's going to take that out because it's not convenient to get up and down to the main floor. Although it does have an elevator from the bottom floor all the way to the top. I noticed that. Uh, I noticed it. Four bedrooms and three and a half bath. What I'm looking at, I see a lot of homes. Those are mostly permanent homes. On the island, I would say there's about 
half and half, half the people, the houses on the island where people live, like my mother, she's a full-time resident on the island. I have My best friend's a full-time resident on the island. It's fun to watch the school buses come over to the island and pick up the kids in the morning. So there's a, um, a wide range and array of people that are permanent residents, but also there's, a, of course, a lot of rentals as well. Is this on a long-term rental program with somebody? It is on a long-term rental program with Pauly's Island Realty. They stay booked constantly. Once he adds the swimming pool, like the neighbor over there, it's going to continue to just uh, be a rental beast. It will be a, a fantastic rental. And to me, like Bill, I love that the island allows, of course, for short-term rental. Most of our neighborhoods in here in Pauly's have, um, they've curtailed a lot of the short-term rental and people are only allowed to do six months or longer in neighborhoods because people don't want, you know, the, the coming and going and that sort of thing for vacation rentals. But the island itself, of course, it lends itself to that. So you can have this place, like for me, this is my favorite time of year to be here in this at this house because you can still go sit on the beach and read a book. And just have the peacefulness. And um, but if you want to stay here this time of year, and then have the vacationers come during the summer times in the peak, you can make that money, get your rental income, but then have this um, beautiful space to come and respite to come down here. When you first took this listing, what was the most exciting thing that you liked about this home? Because you've listed a lot of property on Paulie's Island over the years. What's the thing that excited you about this? First of all, when I found out that it was owned by the Tarbox family from Georgetown. It just felt full circle to me. Um, so it was a feel good thing. But as far as the house, I love the Pauly's Island Creek. I love that this house is right across from the ocean, situated on the creek, and you have the best of all worlds with a gate and amazing people. I know the neighbors across the street, they're, they're just so nice. They're from Charlotte. They try to spend as many days as they can here and less days in Charlotte. And so, I mean, and you're just like minutes from some of the best dining you could imagine. Chai Blossom, you could ride your bike, you could ride a golf cart, you could walk there from here. Um, Bistro 217, Frank's Outback Restaurant. I've got a map of, of where it is. The viewers can see if they're watching this on, on YouTube. And the, you've got water on both sides. I mean, it's a yeah. little it's a little creek right there. This is a peninsula. So this is a peninsula on the island. So you, it's it's surrounded on every side. It, it, on the, the west side, you have the creek. On the east side, of course, the ocean. And then on the northern area is the inlet that cuts through. So it's just, I mean, you just feel like you're living in a little tree house out here in the middle of that. In the middle I, of I noticed that. that when I was looking at these. It's a, it's, there's still convenience there, but it's like a, it's like a little enclave. It's like quiet, too. How far are we from Charleston and, and Mount Pleasant? From here to Mount Pleasant, I know it well because two of my children, two of my three children live in Charleston. Um, the drive from here to um, Mount Pleasant is so easy. It's easier than going from Mount Pleasant to North Charleston or Mount Pleasant to West Ashley. It's just an open road, double lane. I would say it takes you about 70 minutes, 70 to 75 minutes to get from here to Mount Pleasant. Um, you have to pop through Georgetown, which now is a, a really a destination in and of itself with the downtown history. It is. Yeah. Restaurants are, I mean, Frank's out back from a, a lot of people that come to this area know their Frank's out back is here. Frank's out back is now opening Frank's on front in Georgetown, just down from the George on front street. So it'd be a nice little stop in there, but about 60 minutes, 60 to 75 minutes. And then if you go to the north to like, I will go up there for Costco or whatever. Um, I always joke and say, if I go past Merle's Inlet, I feel like I need to stamp my passport because I like to stay <laughs> in my little area. Um, but that's about a 40 minute ride to Market Commons. You could go up there and have P.F. Chang's and have all the hubbub and all that stuff. And then come retreat back here where it's nice and quiet. There's no question. Pauly's Island is, is uh, onto itself. The, uh, just, just like an uh, so iconic for the Carolina coast, is it not? It is. And Bill, if you knew the history, I mean, the history, and here's something that nobody, and not many people know about this. I want to share this with you today, and I really haven't shared it with anybody. It occurred to me um, just before COVID, 
I came to the realization that majority of what our conservation easement properties in this area, they were all done as a result of women. So, and nothing against men, Bill. Oh, this is cool. Keep, keep, talk, keep telling us. What are you talking this, about? This is going to blow your mind. It blew my mind when I finally realized it. So on the um, Hob Call Barony is on. So right. we're, we're, I mean, that is north of us. It's in, as soon as you come across those two bridges from Georgetown coming north towards Pauley's and Myrtle Beach, on the right, there's Hob Call Barony. That is 17,000 acres, the same size as um, Manhattan. Who are the women the behind making sure this happened? So that was um, Belle Baruch. Belle Baruch was the daughter. She was, a, I think she was like six foot 11 tall. No. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She's amazing. And she was an equestrian genius. Her dad was Bernard Baruch, who was from Camden, South Aiken, South Carolina, made his money in the stock market and began to assemble the 17 acres, 17,000 acres over time. He fell in love with this area. And so he started assembling all these plantations and everything. All of his family died except for Belle. She put all of that in conservation easement, 17,000 acres, same size as Manhattan. So that's to the that's to the south of us. Basically, one of the lessons that, the, that people will get from this podcast is that not only do you sell expensive real estate, not only do you know the, the area very, very well, but you're a great tour guide. <laughs> I love it. I love and it. I know you do. Tell us about why would somebody want that house? As far as will they? I guess what I'm really getting at is somebody that, that didn't want it for, for or, or or had other things in their life, and so they wanted to rent it out. Can they make their money back on the house? At least cover the expense of the house. You could probably cover your expenses, your taxes, your um, flood insurance and utilities, that sort of thing. Um, but you know, the reason you would want this house is location, location, location. They're not making any more of this land. It's not being reproduced. There's only one lot left on this northern tip. And it this is an area that doesn't get hit that hard. Um, some of the areas, you know, when you talk about storms and that sort of thing, I think this is a little more protected. The dunes are great down on this end. The house, Bill, the thing that is most exciting, you could buy this house right now with the plans already designed and drawn and paid for to add the swimming pool to do the interior design piece where you take the and do a new staircase, you make some extra space upstairs because it was really designed for the the previous owner that had some disabilities. And so it was built just for them and to their liking. So it needs some tweaks on the inside, but you could buy it as it is and rent it like crazy, or you could buy it with the plans before the construction starts mid -Jan mid November. There's a lot of good attributes of the house because I've done some due diligence on it before the podcast and stuff. But you know what, Christy? It gets down to your main adage for real estate, and that's location, location, location. It is you're, That's what you're really saying, too, but I am as well. I mean, you look at the map on Google Maps and you see exactly where it is and the information that you're dispersing about the house. It's all about the location. You know, I mean, it's a great well, and, location. And the other piece, too, you know, it's a great rental, but you know, everybody's waiting on the prices to drop in real estate and everything that I'm reading from every economy. They're not going to drop. Like, they're not. They're, they're, it's not. I mean, in this land, I, I can't tell you how many people I am. I am serving right now coming from Mount Pleasant and Charleston looking for a simpler lifestyle with less traffic and less, you know, just like more like just serene. And, and this is this is it. And if, if this house were on Isle of Palms or somewhere, it would be triple the money. Uh, it would be I twice mean, as much. Double yeah. or triple the money. Yeah. And I, I just feel like if I could afford it, I would buy this house. Um, that says a lot right there. Well, Christy, we're going to leave it there. And I, I very much appreciate you uh, spending time. And I got to do a little teaser, everybody else. Uh, Christy's coming back on with me, and we're going to talk about the George. And that's all I'm going to say. But it's awesome, you guys. But thanks, Christy, again for joining us. You've been listening to and watching the uh, Carolina Real Estate Podcast. It's a coastal home tour with our guest from the Litro Company, Christy Whitlock. We've been talking about her listing. And Christy, again, uh, thanks for coming on. And uh, this Let me is Bill Mascio, your host. Until next time. Thank you, Christy. 
All right. Thank you, Bill. You've been listening to or watching the Carolina Real Estate Podcast with Bill Maschio. Want to know more? 